Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Night of Misfortune bringing you the Team Clash Tournament number uno. We have several teams today with great players. And uh, before I talk about how the tournament is structured, let's go ahead and introduce our two players playing in this 1v1 on the Tourney Dome 1v1 mod. So starting on the right hand side, we have the representative of Amogus, or actually I don't know how to say it. <laughs> it is Hope. We haven't seen Hope in a long time. He's spawning over here on the right hand side as the red UEF commander and opening up with a double, double land factory. Gosh, it's been a, it's been a minute since I've cast. His opponent on the other side of the map representing Meet the Johans. It is the explosive Johan, or just Explo. He is our white Cybern commander, and he is putting down a double land factory. Now, well, actually, I don't want to talk about it, but it looks like Hope is moving towards the middle, so we're going to probably have an engagement here. So let me quickly talk about how the tournament is structured. Obviously, it's a knockout bracket, double elimination. There's a, well, not technically double elimination, but there will be a third place match. And we will be having uh, four games. So, and all games will hopefully be casted. There is a second stream hopefully going on right now. It's Orangeables, it's Spiff's stream, so check it out. He, I posted all the links in the Discord, so check all of that out. And uh, so it's a best out of five for each match between the teams. There's two 1v1s, two 2v2s, and then a 3v3 if they tie after all the 1v1s and 2v2s. So that will be very interesting. And obviously we have a lot of modded maps. So yeah, be on the lookout for that as we are experimenting with lots of maps. All right, so Hope here is pushing up to Explosive's base, and I I'm, I wanna say Hope hasn't played this map because he had to look at it to see what it was. Hope hasn't played a lot of 1v1s recently. Actually, hasn't played a lot, period, recently. Explode does know how to play this map. He's played a lot against Iron Commander, so I actually would say that Explo has a really good chance, and I'm not sure if Hope knows who Explo is, because Explo is an old pro. Um, he isn't as good as he used to be, but nevertheless, he's been playing a lot, so he has a lot of experience. Nice engagement here for Explo. Just got to get those loyalists to start firing. He does so, actually getting a very nice engagement here, not losing a single bot yet. Nice cycling of bots. Expo's commander is getting focused down here. I would actually start taking him out here. And this might be a very quick game for Explosive here. He really needs to get his ACU somewhere. Well, actually, no, he started to lose Loyalists, so that's fine to keep the ACU there. So that is quite decent. He's going to keep pushing here. Of course, Loyalists are really good against tanks when they're up and close, and especially in these numbers. Nice re-engagement here as Hope is going to heal his commander on the back end. Let's see. Okay, Explo is expanding. I really, really like that. And if Explo uh, continues to kind of do damage here in the center, take out a couple of mass extractions, that will be huge in the middle of the game. As Hope re-engages here, he does not have any stars, while Explo, um, I think, I don't think he has, a, I don't think he has stars either. I think he took the build cause build time. I think that would make sense here. A lot of engineers, by the way. Explo has uh, built an, an additional engineer to expand. I really, really like that on this map. I don't see enough players doing that. And I think that is a, the way to go, ultimately. I want to say hi to my chat. There's a lot of people already chatting. A cone. Hey, what's up? Savvy. Uh, Savvy's playing, and so does Vanity. Hello, hello. Uh, I won't be able to talk to you because there's a five-minute delay, but feel free to chat amongst yourselves and then if I see something I'll, I'll respond to it with a uh, with a little bit of a delay explosive is plopping down several land factories and a cone is asking already when does it start well it should be starting very very soon actually in a couple of seconds <laughs> from where you're actually posting it so uh, 
I do. I will have to say Hope has hung on very nicely here. He is starting to build a lot of tanks. And uh, he is building a land factory here in the front, which is going to start to protect him very nicely. There's a point defense here. A shield added to this factory will be quite nice here. I will like to see artillery coming out from explosive at this point. I'm honestly surprised he isn't doing that. A pure loyalist composition is only going to get worse and worse with uh, more tanks coming out. Hello, Petite. Nice to see you as well. I believe you are playing in this tournament as well, so thank you for that. There's an engagement here in the center. Nice engagement. Of course, there's still enough loyalists to be contesting these tanks very efficiently here as they take out quite a bit of tanks. Again, explosive, however, is low, and Hope's commander is coming in here to tank quite a bit of damage. That PD is going to start doing work. And uh, if I was explosive, I would be very careful here. It's going to be very close here. Explosive taking a lot of damage. Those tanks might just focus down the commander and somehow the loyalists just evaporate. What an unfortunate turn of events for Explosive. Oh no. He had a lot of loyalists here. And unfortunately, that is just not gonna do it for our German player here. Unfortunately, having a really good opening build, I'm really sad to see him go down in quite such a fashion. But, of course, it is what it is. Best out of one, unfortunately, for each game within the series. But, of course, the team series is a best out of five. So, that will be quite exciting. Hopefully, Meet the Johans can put up a fight. Oh, I will say one last thing is that the, the teams were drafted by the team captains. So I won't dwell into too much of that because the replay is now over, but I will talk about it in our next game. It will be 2v2. It will be on Shiva Prime mod, and I will see you in just a little bit. Welcome, 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 everybody, to the Team Clash Tournament. This is OSS Spiff, also known as Orangibles, for those of you who uh, don't know me from uh, Supreme Commander 2. Uh, and I am bringing you this 2v2 versus, uh, let's see, we have um, on one side, uh, Meet the Johan, which is going to be a little bit ironic for a moment, that'll, uh, for a reason that will be revealed in a second here. And on the other side, uh, we have Team Amogus. Uh, so we'll go ahead and introduce these players, starting with Team Amogus, spawning in as the Teal Aeon Commander. It is Shade, and she has thrown down three very quick land factories here. Her teammate, spawning in as the White Siren Commander, the newest addition to the OSS ranks, it is Frost, and he has thrown down two quick land factories, and he's filling in his eco. And their opponents, starting here, standing in for the Johan, hence the irony, and spawning in as the Green Aeon Commander, it is Akon, and he has also gone for some quick land factories here. And finally, his teammate on Meet the Johans, it is Techblade, spawning in as the Red UEF Commander, and he has four land factories queued up? Wow, okay. So the map is Trellic Island, and uh, we're off to a bit of a slow start here. Uh, each team just pumping out a few starting units. Oh, look at this. Uh, Frost threw down a research station back there. Um, those points are going to start adding up real fast. Meanwhile, a cone has a few MMLs out and a single AA. No one has gone air, so that AA is going to be pretty useless here, except to maybe uh, draw some fire as a meat shield. Uh, and meanwhile, um, both teams just kind of sending out some scouts. Ooh, this is nasty. MML around the backside. UEF can't do a whole lot to uh, combat that with just land units. Uh, meanwhile, a cone is making a very aggressive push into the choke point here, and it looks like maybe Shade is doing something similar on the other side of the map here. Another MML, two MMLs coming out uh, to uh, support this flank. Uh, meanwhile, these three tanks are coming down into a cone's base, and he doesn't have a whole lot at home to defend this on the front. These tanks are going to have to move up, um, and he's decided his MML flank isn't going to work out. Um, all right, well, I do really like these Brackmen. Um, it's a little early for them, but uh, he's not over-relying. Frost is not over-relying on them. He's going to back up and uh, 
look to, to defend this position at the mouth of the choke here. Meanwhile, over on the other side, Shade is making her aggressive push and it's working out pretty well for her. She's redirected three, these three tanks um, and doesn't look like they're going to get that mass extractor, but they make a nice, nice distraction from the ACU pushing in from the north. And everyone's just got uh, all of their economy filled in for the most part. Actually, uh, Cone's a bit behind on that, isn't he? Hmm. Okay, so Frost decides that uh, he doesn't he doesn't want to rebuild that mass extractor. He's just going to put that mass into uh, more units and, and building this factory, I guess. All right, Shades MMLs are finally. Uh, about in position to start doing some damage here. Uh, Cohen's got a single MML uh, in the mirror position there. And big fight between the ACUs here. Frost is getting pretty low. The Cohen's backing off, but he is starting to lose some tanks. I don't know, looks like a fairly even fight. Oh, those bots are starting to get pretty low on health though. Ooh, that's just rude. Come on, a Cone. All right, um, we've got more flanks going on. Flanks all over the place. Holy crap! Okay. Um, and for some reason, Shades MMLs haven't really found any damage over here yet. Uh, Cone's MMLs just stalled out. Oof! Losing those factories is painful. Uh, Frost has got a point defense now, and um, hopefully that's going to buy him a little bit of space. But he's in trouble. That uh, research station opening uh, put him behind in production. Shade's got a very aggressive factory going down here to plug up the choke point. There are a lot of tanks here, though. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, Tech Blade, uh, also known as Savvy Nolo, uh, has quite a few tanks here. That factory is not going to get finished. So Shade may be uh, being a bit too aggressive on that push there. Um, Tech Blade's tanks over here still haven't really gotten much done, though. Adapters out now for well, no, yeah, welcome, that is welcome adapter, everybody sorry. to the team oh. clash tournament. This is oh. all right. Well, at least we know my audio is working. That's good. All right. Um, ooh, more MMLs going down the south side here for Shade. And uh, again, a cone just has nothing, nothing at home really to defend this. Um, at least as Aeon, he could push some tanks out into the water, but uh, they're not in a good position right now. Um, Shade is uh, target firing these MMLs, it looks like, or nope, they're just doing their own thing. And meanwhile, Frost is managing to hold his own here, but there is a point defense down now. It's going to make it a little bit more difficult for him to actually push out of his base, and now this one MML over here is starting to find some damage. I don't know if it'll be able to kill anything, but it is starting to put down some damage onto some of these buildings. Yeah, Frost is in a bit of trouble here. Shade just doesn't have very many units at all, and they're all spread out across the map. Uh, meanwhile, Akon and, uh, and Tech Blade have just been producing and producing and producing and not really losing a whole lot uh, as far as their units go. And without, uh, without too many MMLs up here, Akon's going to have a difficult time pushing. Meanwhile, Shade's got a big problem to deal with over here as well, and no splash damage to deal with this big blob of units. Yeah. Ooh, that shield popped up uh, just before the point, or just after the point defense died. These tanks now focusing. Few do get underneath the shield there. Another engagement going on on the other side of the map. Uh, Cone is putting down a research station, so he feels pretty confident right now that he's got the production uh, to be able to uh, push uh, or at least hold on. Uh, meanwhile, Tech Blade's a uh, giant blob of tanks here is pushing into Shade's base, and Shade just doesn't have a whole lot that she can do to stop this right this second. Um, she is pulling tanks back, uh, but uh, she's got these uh, tanks uh, from a cone in the back of her base. Meanwhile, Tech Blade is, it looks like he's basically looking to do a base swap. Uh, he's lost three out of his four starting mexes, and he's going to lose the last one pretty soon here. Frost still just sitting back and Hecking. He does have another factory up now, so that's good. And Shade is in some real trouble here. More of a Cone's tanks coming into support as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, technically it doesn't have much of a base left. 
as far as his economy goes, but man, this is a lot of units, and I don't think Shade is going to have enough to fight this off. I don't know how Shade's going to do this. Shade might need to just retreat over into Frost's base uh, in order to survive here. Oh, that's a lot of tanks. So many tanks, kids in real trouble. Now there's even a couple engineers over here. Not doing much, but... Yeah, I don't know how Shade's gonna get uh, get out of this. Meanwhile, Frost has uh, managed to find a foothold, and he is pushing across the choke point, so he might be able to um, take out a cone, and then um, I don't know where this, where this game would go from there, though, because Techblade's going to have a, a lot of mass to suck up over here. He could start setting up a secondary base, even if Frost's push is successful and he manages to kill or drive back a cone. Shay trying to escape into the water. I don't know, can, I don't think the commander can quite get far enough underwater to avoid all of the tank fire, especially from uh, Aeon tanks that can go across the water. These, fortunately for Shade, are UEF tanks. There are some Aeon tanks here, but probably not enough to take out the ACU. Meanwhile, we've got an engagement going on over here. Frost's uh, artillery is firing pretty fast here, um, but not really hitting a whole lot. Oh, well, that, that might be it. Yep. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of dead stuff around here, but it still looks very, very even. Um, Shade is not doing so hot over here, though. So basically, Frost, uh, his only real hope here is going to be to uh, defeat Akon's ACU before uh, all of these uh, tanks. And Oh, we've got Air Factory uh, up now as well for... Uh, uh, for Nolo. Uh, so those bombers, well, I mean, there's adapters though, so they're not going to do a whole lot against Frost until there's a lot more of them at least. But this is, uh, again, a lot of units, and I don't know if Frost really has enough to, to fight this back. Basically a 2v1 at this point. Um, I see less red there, but uh, still a lot of green. Ooh, that's going to be some juicy hits though. Ah, oh, oh, ouch. Okay. Uh, but now Frost has a big problem in the north. This isn't going to be enough units to clean that up. At least not before the factory goes down, I don't think. Except for, I don't know, maybe unit detonate? If he has it. Finally, those uh, Brackmen start making some really good connections there. Whoa. It does take them an awful long time to take down those tanks, though, due to the shields. Shields uh, take an awful lot of hit points. Alright, so Frost has managed to uh, finally get the upper hand here. Will he be able to actually take out the ACU, though? There's not a whole lot of direct firing units, and they're mostly. Uh, the bots are mostly focusing on the tanks, uh, so I don't know that they're going to be able to necessarily take down the ACU um, before it gets away and, and gets to the reinforcements up here. Uh, Thorn is now down in the red. Uh, he's turning around. He's confident. I don't know though. Oh, yeah, I think I think the bots are going to do it. I think the bots are going to do it. A cone goes down. That could be the opening that Shade and Frost need to get back into this game. Um, the downside, of course, is that now Frost has barely any units to fight off this blob, and he's got to run for his life. Um, Shade is, meanwhile, trying to reestablish herself over here. She's not going to be able to push up into that point defense just yet. Her uh, ACU um, uh, health is a little bit too low, I think, for that. Um, Meanwhile, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Techblade, 
Savinolo, whichever you prefer. He hasn't really rebuilt his economy. He's only got four mass extractors here, and he's trying to run three factories. I mean, that should be enough, but um, he's not really... Oh, ooh, that's nasty. I can't believe I missed that going down. That is really nasty. So what she did there was uh, built up the ledge so that she didn't have to expose her ACU, but she managed to get that point defense down. And uh, this distraction is working out pretty well, I think. Um, Frost managed to get away. He's moving back to his base. And yeah, he's, he's managed to uh, plug up that choke point again, so it's going to be pretty difficult for Techblade to push his tanks up into those Brackmen. And with that factory down, there's going to be a factory shield as well, I'm sure. Techblade is down to about half health on his ACU. Um, these point defenses are doing their jobs. Um, and uh, maybe providing an opening for Shade to move back up onto the top of the hill and start reestablishing an economy and get back into this game. Um, it's a really great move from Shade, though, um, building up the, uh, up the ledge like that. It's brilliant. Another research station going down for Frost, so, you know, he, he feels pretty safe at the moment, it looks like. Meanwhile, uh, Techblade's just trickling units up to the north, and they're just going to walk right into that point defense and give free research to Shade. Right. So we're kind of... Um, kind of in a spot here, yeah, I think Techblade is losing his grip on this game. Um, once a cone went down, that really just provided so much more space for Shade to start getting back into the game. Techblade's down really low on his ACU, and I think Shade's just going to chase him down. Techblade knows this is it, he's stopped moving even. Shade and one hero bot. Will take down Techblade's ACU. And Shade and Frost managed to take it. Very close game, a lot of fun, a lot of back and forth. I really enjoyed that one. Alright, well, um, we've got lots more games coming uh, at you soon here on the B stream, so we're going to uh, switch back over to uh, uh, the Be Right Back screen, and uh, we will then be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. For some reason, my overlay is not updating. Let me fix that really quick. I hate this new uh, streaming system I'm using. For some reason, it just will not update sometimes, and it is very, very annoying. Sorry about that. Sorry about the delay also. Um, we had a, a couple of players that did not show up, so I had to find their replacements. But we are now in game three, technically. It is a 2v2 between Team Mogus and Meet the Johans. And we are going to introduce our players, starting with Amogus in the top. We have our red UEF commander. It is Hope spawning in here and opening up with an air factory. His teammate is the Teal and Commander opening up with a quad research station. It is Vanity. His Their opponents that are getting scouted now. It is none other than our white Aeon Commander, Fox Tremelin. He's opening up with a double land factory. We'll see how that counters Vanity's ACU push here. And a double research station from our blue... Cybern Commander, it is Explo. So we have a little bit of the 1v1 shenanigans going on. Now, obviously, you see the score up there at the top. 2-0 Almogus, meet the Johans, 0. And I know that you guys are probably... Oh, by the way, I forgot to point this out. This is quite interesting here. Hope is taking the mass of vanity here. Very, very interesting indeed. And no air from... Meet the Johans. But yeah, so you might be saying, well, these teams are not very balanced. And I would actually agree with you, but you cannot point the blame to me because I'm not the one that assigned these teams. There were four captains that I chose. It was Iron Commander, um, Alpha, 
Fox and Vanity. And they are the ones that pick these players. So these teams are not very balanced, unfortunately. And I'm sorry to say that. I mean, obviously, there is quite a bit of uh, a skill difference between some players. Uh, and it's kind of unfortunate because uh, we really... I, I think if we had more players, we would definitely be... Uh, more balanced, I think. And 16 players is a lot, though. I'm quite happy with the turnout for this event. I want to thank all these players for supporting the game. And uh, playing in a fun tournament here. So, very exciting. There will probably be more. So, be on the lookout for those if you can sign up for more. We do have a range on the ACU. So, Fox Mellon should know what is going on here. Curiously enough, he is still going to be going up with this commander here. Harvogs are making their way forward here. And what is Hope doing? Hope is not building anything. Oh, there was a transport. But why is he not producing anything? He has a lot of mass. Vanity is getting caught out of position here. But we do have teleport here. Very interesting strategy, I do have to say. It looks like uh, Explosive is also going ACU upgrades. That's the only thing that would make sense to me. Explosive putting down a point defense back there. And uh, Vanity is probably going to look to try and engage with his ACU into the main base. Nice radar position also by Team Among Us. Covering all of this, there are also MMLs in the this transport. Very interesting strategy indeed. There is a point defense that's going to get completed here, but honestly, Vanity shouldn't be too far off from teleport. Vox really needs to keep these things moving here. There's a lot of point defenses. That's what Hope has been building this whole time. And uh, yeah, this Harvog push is just going to get shut down flat on its face. But Vanity is actually very close to dying. Oh, Vanity actually dies here. That was quite unexpected, and I didn't catch. I think the teleport was a little late there. And Vanity goes down as Fox Jamelin's expansion here, or Harvok incursion, does end up going down. There's quite a bit of point defenses here, but it's not going to do a whole lot against mobile missile launchers. So this base is actually going to fall. You need loyalists in this case, Explo. You can't counter point defenses with, with. Uh, oh, sorry, you can't counter missile mobile missile launchers with point defend point defense. All right, there is a land gantry going down for Explo. I actually don't particularly like this idea. There's air making its way for. Hope. I was going to say he built two wasps for some reason, but now he's building bombers. So that's definitely good. Yeah, and this is going to be quite painful. And this is going to give a lot of research to our UEF commander here. And that's really not a good idea um, or not a good thing here because uh, air can be quite deadly, especially in a, such a big map. If Hope does end up losing these two expansions, I mean, yes, it's going to be quite uh, hurtful. But we are still quite a bit away from that. But also, there isn't that much air at this point. And it looks like Hope is no Hope is very slowly building up that bomber force. Hope continues to do <clears throat> to inflict quite a bit of damage here with those mobile missile launchers. Really need more Harvogs. I'm really not sure why uh, we can't get uh, you know at least a turd on each uh, in each base. Uh, ideally, it would be two turds, and if you don't know what a turd is, a turd is a group of four Harvogs. Officially, that term was coined by, I think, Mr. Steal Your Girl. But, well, no, it, it wasn't coined. It was invented by Mr. Steal Your Girl, but it was coined by us, collectively, the three OSS casters, during the uh, winter season. <laughs> uh or the winter open in, back in 2019. There we go. Now we have a healthy turd here. Swing back and forth. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, I'm a little surprised Hope didn't expand earlier. 
I think that would have been a, a, a very good thing. But uh, all right, let me use this time to say hello to a few people. Uh, Morgan Rise in the chat. Fury Regan. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Nice to see you. Uh, Hope is in there, but he's obviously playing. And then Petite. And then I think I saw Soul Ripper. Soul Ripper. What are you doing, man? You should have played. But it's nice to see you nevertheless. I hope to see you at the 1v1 tournament. Oh, by the way, 1v1 tournament next weekend. Last chance to qualify for the summer season uh, final. And there's quite a bit of spots left. So you have a pretty good chance to qualify if you guys play. Oh, wow. I did not know this ledge here. Wow, that's actually a crazy positioning for these PDs. Because if the Megalith goes up, I think he might be able to hit from here and the PDs won't be able to hit. But the problem now is this AC Terror that's most likely being built. I doubt it's an Air Fortress. That would make no sense to me. But honestly, it's a little bit off away. We are getting a bunch of anti-air towers. I would love to see uh, uh, adapters at this point. By the way, the second stream has started. On the other stream, we have the second 2v2 going on uh, between, uh, I believe it's Frost and Shade versus Savvy Nolo versus a cone. Oh, and a cone. So quite interesting game there. Basically, OSS versus non-OSS. So while they're already up, I do hope that uh, Amogus wins that match. <laughs> Ooh, a second Langanchi. I don't know about that. I don't know if he'll have enough mass here. Explo actually expanded crazily here. This radar is really going to provide some useful information here. Uh, do we have adapters coming out? There is air coming out now, but it's just not going to be fast enough. Uh, wait. Did he build an experimental transport? Is that what it freaking is? I can't see what you're pinging, but I think he's building experimental transports. I hate how it doesn't generate the model sometimes. It's Why is he building... Oh, God. Is he just hoping for, like, a snipe? Because I think four of these... I never built these, to be completely honest. I don't remember if they have ground fire. But if it's the same way as the Cybern experimental transport then it does quite a bit of damage and like three or four is enough to kill a commander so yeah i mean they see this on the radar so they see something's going on here um and i, I doubt they think it's uh non-experimentals here this mobile missile launcher or tml installation actually is going to probably do quite a bit of damage here Air is not engaging yet. Hope, I think, is going to wait for at least one more. Yeah, he just does not have enough mass. I I'm, I'm honestly surprised that Hope, being a great player that he is, um, left a <laughs> energy generator unbuilt, uh, didn't expand, and uh, is not producing or mis mismanaged his uh, production. Although now I think he has enough, so he's starting to build that one. Um, I just don't know. I feel like... Fox and Explo will be well prepared for this. Will be very well prepared for that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't even know if these do ground damage. But why would he be building them unless he's going complete yellow mode, which makes no sense. Usually when you're going yellow, you're at least trying to do something that will potentially work but if these don't ground fire then it's like a complete waste I'm pretty sure they ground fire though I just never built them I think these are like so out of the way in the tech trees that they don't make sense neither do the cybern ones really but they're just funny to use alright so we are going to see an engagement here Bombers and four experimental transports. We do have Honker from Explo. I like that, but I think the target will honestly be Fox. Well, actually, I don't know. I don't know if that, that's a smart, smarter decision. Looks like Fox does not have Honker yet. Or maybe he's just waiting for the shields to go down. First shield is down. Wow, they are not breaking through the shields quickly enough at all. 
and a lot of these transports are already in yellow. Now the problem here is if they start falling, they might actually kill Foxtermel in here, but uh, I think Expo will be just fine here. Although they're, the AA is actually Foxtermelons here. Oh, nice honker at the very last second. Oh my god. Foxtermelon! I think Foxtermelon should be nerfed. Foxtermelon should absolutely be nerfed. He survives with 400 HP. Marvelous calculation, or maybe it was luck, but I think it's calculation seeing that he's our number one SCS player. That is insane, guys. You have no idea how close that was there for Foxtermelon to fall. And after that, honestly, all this air could have fallen and then if Hope could have re refocused on Explosive. That was an insane game and a marvelous play, even if not intentional, by Foxtermelon. Great, great game. They pull one game out, go over to Spiss Channel, see how the B stream goes, and see if we can go to game five, 3v3. I would be so excited to do it. But for now, I will take a little break and I will watch the other stream with you guys. See you soon. If you're still watching, give a thumbs up to this video. If you like the video, leave a comment. If you love the video, please subscribe. And if you are blown away by it, check out my Patreon page. This has been Knight. Take care and peace out.